Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. And we're zooming in and focusing in on a fantastic viewer question. And that is, is it, why is it dangerous or really hazardous or destructive to be in a relationship with a covert narcissist? Um, we can even take that so far as to say someone who is psychopathic or even overt narcissistic. So we're really going to look at that, really the results and the ramifications in, that is embedded in that great viewer question. But before we get started, I just want to give a super huge shout out to those of you who have been generous enough to go ahead and make a donation to the Peace and Harmony channel here. Thank you so much for your generosity, your kind words, your support. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to help you through and sort through some very bewildering, confusing, and painful relationships dynamics that has had your head spinning. You really do need to gain clarity. You do need to gain a footing. You really do need to make a stand because these individuals, not to downplay your strength, but they can really throw your life for a loop, a big loop uh, that can take really, you know, for many years to sort of heal. And it's my goal here on the channel to get you results here ASAP as soon as possible so you're moving into action and you're getting results. So thank you so much for your kindness and generosity. And, and absolutely, if the, re if the channel here has been a positive resource and we have provided positive tools, discussions, and support, please do feel free to participate and give back to the channel. There is a PayPal donate now button here on the homepage at the Peace and Harmony channel. So thank you once again. And we're going to zoom in and focus in on this great viewer question. What is really so destructive about a covert narcissist relationship? I get presented with this question a lot, especially if it's being presented by someone who perhaps is married has been with this individual for 24 years, 25 years, 18 years, and really they're starting to really hit that sort of rock bottom, that unhappiness. Um, perhaps they have children with this individual and they don't want to ruffle a lot of feathers even though they have been experiencing a smear campaign or a sort of, you know, creating of sides or a sort of division within the family. Um, with these covert narcissist spouse, whether it's male or female. And, you know, and then people just really basically tend to say, this is how they're always going to be, and then they dismiss it. And then they end up dismissing their own feelings. They end up dismissing their own needs. They basically end up letting this person off the hook. Then simultaneously, you're letting yourself off the hook. You're not really having your needs addressed and you can push it away. You can procrastinate for only so long to the point where really it's going to hit a crossroads. It's going to hit a sort of blow up where either you expose them, you know, the smear campaign, you're just getting tired of it. It's burning you out. It's wearing you out. You're disgusted. You know, you don't care so much about things. You become disheveled. You become disinterested in things. Your day-to-day -day life is one routine after another. Nothing seems to change. Nothing is exciting. And in fact, it's de-escalating and getting very sort of, very much in an unhappy or unproductive, unfulfilled space. And really with time, the relationship can tend to grow in opposite directions. In other words, this person's on one end of the house, you're on the other end of the house, they're on this floor, you're on the other floor, and there just is this growing tension. You know, relationships aren't just static. You know, they're just not, you know, they just don't tread water. I mean, they eventually, you know, grow or change, you know, one direction in or another. And especially with relationships where you are married to this person, um, where you are cohabitating or where this is, is a parent. And really, this is your caregiver, the person who you're counting on, you're putting your trust on to sort of be your best sounding board. And really what is so destructive is the degree to which they hold you back 
and have negative expectation for you in your life, a negative vision for you. You know, when we talk about companies and organizational psychology, you know, a very good company is said to have excellent leadership, excellent executive organization, excellent C-level executives, people of integrity, people of value, people of wisdom, people who are ethical, people who are supportive and create a supportive, nurturing, strength-based atmosphere. So, and then likewise, there are also organizations which also, as the old adage is, stinks from the head down. In other words, there's work environments where the upper leadership is unethical, lack integrity, lack principles, lacked guiding missions, you know, missions that run the organization and have a negative vision or are operating by a negative vision or a negative expectation, namely that of greed and lack of integrity, um, backstabbing, favoritism, um, you know, violation of boundaries, violation of ethics, violation of proprietary codes, you know, chains of command, you know, people are um, stepping on other people's toes. It is <clears throat> plagued by favoritism, divisiveness. People aren't raised on, you know, they're not making progress due to merits. They're making, you know, um, you know, people who are advancing up in um, the environment, maybe there might be, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, buddy-buddy uh, type of stuff where um, there's nepotism, where it's the boss's daughter, the boss's son, uh, the manager's best friend, the manager's uh, buddy from college, who's getting all the deals, who's getting all the sweet clients, etc. So this can be a really prob problematic situation when you have covert narcissism or greed, or psych, you know, psychopathic style organizations. And believe you me, they are out there. And they can be very, very destructive. And so namely, when you are trying to understand why is it so destructive, why is it harmful, why is it uh, deleterious or not in your best interest, it is because of this negative vision or negative expectation or negative vision that this person holds for you and your life. Believe it or not, we need to surround ourselves with other people who are like a mastermind. Um, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, he talked about this in the early century uh, book, Think and Grow Rich, um, basically printed in the 1930s, and he talked about the importance of a mastermind. People who come together to who are of like mind and are there for a, a common goal. In other words, to grow a company, to uh, help a community, to grow a college, to found a hospital. So it's like a board of directors or what you would call your mastermind group. And it is very, very important to surround yourself with people whom you can share. And especially when it comes to personal growth, um, growing your interests, growing your talents, growing your productivity, growing your professionalism, sharpening your acts, so to speak, that you are around and surround yourself with others who have a positive vision for you, a positive expectation, and are supportive. Um, if you... Sorry about that. We just dropped the video. But we're going to carry on. Not sure how that happened. And I apologize. We do this raw here, folks. So, sorry about that. I hope you guys are all okay. We're going to pick up where we left off. I love this about um, uncut videos. So, now, um, basically, what we're stating is that um, the what is destructive is, or counterproductive, if, if you have someone who has a negative vision or a negative image of you and they're constantly holding that negative image in mind, eventually it's like the fishbowl concept. You know, um, if you have a goldfish and you put it in a small, tiny, teeny, tiny, um, you know, goldfish bowl 
it will not grow very big because its environment is so small. You know, you can really only grow really to the extent for which you surround yourself with a positive climate, a positive mindset, and surround yourself with others who also have a positive expectation and are of like mind and have a like vision or cause, which is not, you know, more cooperative and not competitive. Um, there's th such a thing as, yes, healthy competition in the workplace, friendly competition. It does help to um, make a more productive, higher morale workplace, I feel. Um, and likewise, it is when, for example, if you were to take an, um, an art class or a pottery class or an automotive repair class, and you're there under tutelage and instruction, and, you know, there's other people who are learning simultaneously, you know, you are going to accelerate your growth, accelerate your learning, if you're also around others who are attempting to learn the same skill, learn the same tools, recover the knowledge, you know, it is very helpful. You will perform better when there's a positive vision sort of curating or causing a come to, coming together, basically an emotional climate, a social context, social validation. Even if it's unspoken, even if it's just nonverbal or, you know, sheer vast numbers of people, it will help you to succeed. This is positive expectation, positive vision, positive mission. So likewise, if you are around a covert narcissist who has a pathological sense of a win-lose dichotomy, in other words, for them to win, there must be a loser. They must always rub it in. They're always going to, you know, uh, you know, rub, you know, rub you the wrong way or rub you down, meaning grinding you down. You are the less than. You're not important. You're not as lucky. Uh, you're not as healthy. You're not as tall. You're not as skinny. You're not as fat. Your hair isn't as long. Your hair isn't as short, etc. Your beard isn't as thick. Whatever it is, there's always going to be a yardstick with which they're always saying you can't jump high enough. You don't measure up. I am the taller one. I am the bigger one. I am the smarter one. I am the more quiet one. Whatever it is, they are always more than. And so this creates a very negative vision or a negative sort of, again, the top-down philosophy where they're trying to overwhelm you through these subtle mechanisms. They don't give you the time of day. They don't give you eye contact. Eye contact is so important to establish trust. If you, you know, were, you know, dealing with someone who's always shuffling around and looking down at the ground, you know, or looking away or always fidgeting and speaking really fast and running by you, you know, and not really giving you a presence and a relaxed demeanor, you know, you would feel, you know, there's this person, I'm not making a connection. There is no trust. You don't feel a sense of eye contact, a sense of val validation or valuation. Trustworthy people are able to make eye contact. They're able to hold a gaze. Their face isn't threatening. You know, they don't have a, a fake smile. They don't have excessive silly grins, um, you know, and they're not overly serious. They, you know, can have a sense of humor, but, you know, it is, you know, a clean humor. You know, it is a, a jovial enthusiasm. You know, there is this comfortability and comfort when you are with someone who you can trust. And so when you're around a covert narcissist who isn't able to give you the, you know, the eye contact that you are one or you're equal, if they're always trying to be passive aggressive or treating you as if, you know, you are the submissive one, you are the weaker one, you are the yin to their yang, and you never have a chance to rise up to be the yang. If you look at Chinese symbolism, they have the yin and the yang. The yang is the higher energy, the more aggressive energy, and then the yin is the softer, the feminine, the recessive. You know, it doesn't, one complements the other. And then the way that they have it is the yin and yang balance each other out. In other words, there's a little 
spot of yin in every yang and there's a little spot of yang in every yin so they complement and then they flow around to each other and so you know when you're it's like playing cards with a covert narcissist and you only have half a deck they're playing you know they're tr acting like they're playing with a full deck and you can never play with them because you're only de dealt half a deck you're not dealt a fair hand you're always like in an emotional blackjack with them always trying to say the house always wins you know it's it's on me the house always wins it's on me so it can be very very discouraging but oftentimes the yin the silent treatment the putting up the tolerating the just never being able to address it because the covert narcissist can be so receding and so um, passive or retreating and you know the quality of, of rapport is not there that this can create a negative vision or a negative expectation so I find that to be one of the most deleterious and really hazardous effects because if you're constantly around someone who has a negative vision of you eventually you're going to create that self-fulfilling prophecy you're going to always basically it is human nature ultimately is you're going to prove them right you're right I can't make a living you're right I can't cook a, a meal worth a darn you're right I can't drive you know you're right um, I can't cook you know you're right uh, you know I, I, I can't raise my kids you're right I am ugly you're right I do take too much time you know event eventually there is the acquiescing to their frame of reference so their frame of reference is basically how they view others it's the approach it is the mindset which is which is what is everything is is what they are bringing and how they're constantly treating you and this has more to do with them than it has to do with you and so we don't realize this this is just like you know back when you were in school and you had a wonderful teacher chances are this person might have you know read your paper in class they might have called you to the front of the room they might have had the class you know applaud you they might have had you present your material they gave you a good grade they might have liked your writing your paperwork your art the way you fixed a truck um, the way you did your painting the way you you did your social studies how you answered in your essays you know they were acknowledging and validating and they, they believed in you and your talent so it is oftentimes then you think well that would be my favorite teacher I really enjoyed that teacher they taught me some skills which really have carried over into my adult life when I think back so if you can think back now for a moment and think back of some of the great teachers who you've had and think of the some of the great skills that they have taught you really it's those that have helped you to navigate the real world that have helped you in your day-to-day -day life make it it's helped you to basically be there at even if it was one small subject whatever it is or one small lesson whatever it is that has stayed with you it was very applicable and this person was there to teach you and make sure that you got it so you would continue and you were to foster this and you were to understand even as a child how important this was it wasn't saying well you know only the special kids will get a chance to learn you know um, only this only the special kids will get a chance to have a birthday only the special kids will get a chance to sit up front only the special kids will get you know maybe yeah the, t the team jersey if you were played in sports you know if you were in varsity or something that's a different situation but yet it is so important to have people in your life who have a positive vision who believe in you who have an unconditional positive regard for you and a positive vision or positive expectation to show you yes I believe in you you can do it you know be, because to be constantly doubted and thwarted and treated as less than them to always have this hierarchy you know yes there are people who are smarter than others you know um faster um runners than others etc but it doesn't mean that they need to discredit others in order to you know advance themselves that is the problem 
I feel that we see in covert narcissism is there's always, you know, they're operating by a sense of lack. And so they need to sort of shorten the energy that they give to others because for fear of lack themselves. In other words, the withholding, um, the, the fantastical thinking, um, the entitlement thinking that I can go ahead and treat you this way and be ignoring of you, yet I expect you to perform, you know, and, and, and rise to the ranks, yet I mistreat you. I'm expecting you to cook a dinner, yet I don't, you know, you, but you're not able to get a job and you're not able to earn anything for yourself. So, but I'm having all these expectations or I'm expecting you to clean my house, yet I yell at you every day. Or I'm expecting you to raise our children, yet I never give you any credit. I never acknowledge you and validate you. I just have this sort of, you know, well, that's your job. You know, do your job. You know, in other words, there's this sort of, um, uh, you know, there's just sort of this dismissive um, less than treatment. So if you treat others less than, then they're ultimately going to perform less than. And so the cycle continues. So it's so important to break the cycle, break the cycle of negative expectation. Instead, embody positive expectation for yourself and begin to surround yourself with others who also can maintain a positive vision, a positive expectation, and that you are able then, for example, like in this community, the goal is positive expectation for healing. You work the tools you understand the concepts, you listen to them again and again, you do the recovery date, you do your recovery journal, you engage in positive orderly direction thinking, you catch yourself from backsliding to negative orderly direction thinking, and then that no longer is attractive to you to go back to the abuse. You're able to sort it out, you're able to figure it out, you're able to see things more clearly, and then you go humming along, and then then one day it all clicks and you're saying, you know what, by God, I am healing. I'm getting a taste of it now. I'm going to keep it going. I believe in myself. I understand what happened now. I understand how I over obligated myself. I understand how I sacrificed too much and I, I gave up my happiness in order to take care of this person and their emotional needs. And now it's time for me. My emotional needs take precedence. And I have a positive vision of what my healthy emotional needs are and my positive interests and what they are. And I now embrace those and I write them in an appointment book. I follow up on them and I engage in these behaviors. I am able to address things that I've been procrastinating on that have held me in that trap, that lower identity, um, that lower mood, that lower temperament, that, you know, that lower mindset which kept me sick, unhappy, unproductive, feeling miserable. And I'm able to shed that away like an old skin the way a, a caliputer would become a butterfly. And then all of a sudden you become like a new creature. You, Your life takes wings. You're able to flitter and flutter around. You're able to dart and dash among the flowers. You're able to you know, sail with the breezes you are taking flight. You're, you're in a lighter mood. So the positive vision for yourself also can be accelerated when you surround yourself with others, even if, you know, even if you don't really know them, who engage in a like, um, a like activity, a like behavior, a like mindset, a like expectation, where basically there's a positive environment, there is a positive ethos, there's a positive climate, and then you're able to grow and develop there. Really, that's the goal of the community here. And I encourage you and, and, um, and hope that you are also able to find other mastermind groups or other groups, other meetups, other support groups, um, whether it's through a church, whether it's through your workplace, whether it's through um, a life coach, whether it's through um, you know a meetup group that you have found online at meetup.com, where you're exploring similar interests, um, and you're then pursuing these and engaging in, and you're closing the gap between 
what you want to be and then you're you're actually doing it so you're actually doing the do you're actually walking the walk you're talking the talk and you're actually in motion action is paramount so I encourage you to keep that positive vision for yourself if you find yourself getting too neutral or too far back re up it and saying well I've got a positive vision I surround myself with a positive life is beautiful goodness is happening to me miracles are taking place in my life and so it is and I embrace these miracles and I keep a lookout in a vision for the miracles in my life and I it turns my head I take notice and I'm able to absorb the positive message that the divine intelligence is sending my way in helping me to fulfill that positive vision for myself and letting go of the grief that this person perhaps this abuser can't be with you to share in that the whole goal of of healing is not so that you get good enough healed enough so that you take them back no 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 you get healed enough so you're able to identify the boundaries and the standards that shows you where and when the violations are so you're able to identify and then stop getting emotionally sucked in and falling prey to the interspecies predator such that we see with a someone who is psychopathic or even as destructive and isn't um, kind of beyond the eye way in the covert narcissist personality disorder this is your buddy peace and harmony with you here today I hope that these videos do help please share and please subscribe for more great tools videos discussion and support love you peace out